welcome to Hot Weekly. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the haunted attraction and haunted entertainment industry. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you and to represent you merrily and verily in this podcast of sphere, if you will. <laughs> I think you're going a little too far with that. <laughs> but we are a podcast. We, we are indeed a podcast. That, that <laughs> much is very true. And we are back for episode 35. Yes. I'm realizing we're getting dangerously close to episode 52. Okay. But you know what that means. One year of Haunt Weekly. Wow. Think about it. Yeah. Mm, it's getting, That's kind of getting, true. Getting a little close. But anyways, it's good to be back this week. Uh, last week, of course, we had the, the wonderful first episode of Women in Haunting. That was a very, very, very cool talk we had there with Holly. Yes. I think it went very, very well. Uh, Haunting, Cr- Haunting, Holly Chrysler. I mean, Chrysler. Chrys- ah! <laughs> Not like the car. I know, I know. That's the problem, is now I have the car in my head. Sorry, that's how I remembered not to say it that way. <laughs> Anyways, but it is good to be back. We yes. do not have a special guest this week, but we will be doing continuing that series soon. We have a couple other people lined up. Yeah, probably one a month for a little while. Yeah, we want to we want to space them out a little bit. We don't want to like, just like bombard with this. It's an yeah. important topic, and there's lots of people interested in speaking with us because you know they're crazy. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're grateful for it, but. But seriously, we are looking forward to continuing this, and we'll be spacing it out as we go. But on that note, we do have another very special episode this week. A topic that... Okay. When we first started this, we had a running gag between the two of us. Uh-huh. Where if we ever ran out of topic ideas, we would just look at the categories of topics at every um, haunted con- haunted attraction convention, whether it's <laughs> Haunt Con or Chicago Frights or whatever, we'd look at the list and just pick a topic from there, and if we needed help, get someone on it. I think this joke was so inside that it was only you. And, well, <laughs> well, we had, we had actually made this discussion that we would just okay. simply pull from a uh, haunted um, convention, haunted attraction convention, if we needed. Mm-hmm. Um, we have not really done that much. <laughs> no. We, we, these topics have been pretty much our own. Yeah. But this one is definitely a topic that is at every haunted attraction convention, is it not? It's at every business convention. That is true. That is, that is very true. It's not just every our industry. It's every industry. Right. But anyway, since we are talking about conventions and conferences, maybe we should do the conference reminders. Maybe we should, because we missed them last week. No, uh, we didn't miss them. We intentionally We intentionally them. skipped them. We wanted every precious moment we could get with Holly. Yes. And i got to say, it was time well spent. It was. Not often I spend 50 minutes with a woman and she's not running away screaming. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> All right. I'll kick them off. Yes, please On do. that note. Someone please start. Okay, we've got Haunt Dash Fair, August 6th and 7th at the Clarion Hotel that in Rank. this week, people. This week. This week. Rank and Coma, New York. Haunt Dash F-A-I-R-E dot com. Yeah. Fashion show, car show, art show, and more haunted tour bus of long... Island, not a haunt tour, just they go and drive you to haunty places. In a bus. Spooky places. That sounds kind of cool. I'm just saying, yeah. just don't expect it to be a haunt tour. It's the reason we right. keep cautioning against that. Um, but if you are not able to make it to New York, and perhaps you're a little more West Coast, the same dates, August 6th and 7th at the Pasadena Convention Center. It's Scare LA. To find out more, at ScareLA.com. Elvira is the host, and there are other celebrity guests to be had. Why? Because it's L.A. That's where the celebrities live. Kind of, yeah. It kind of is. It kind of makes sense. Okay. Then, August 12th through the 14th. Hey, my birthday's in the middle of that. It is. We have Chicago Room Escape Conference. With the Trans World, the people who put on Trans World put this on, and it's roomescapeshow.com for more info. Um... If you get in there, though, you might have a hard time getting out. Yeah, just, well, <laughs> it, it is an escape room, so... I would be very disappointed if I didn't. <laughs> just to say, and walk in, walk right back out. Oh, I'm not an escape room. Anyways, yep. I should probably stop making jokes. But later in August, August 27th to 28th, it is Halloween and Haunt Fest at the Arlington Convention Center in Arlington, Texas. 
doy. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can't figure out what the Arlington Convention Center is, I can't help you. Check it out at HalloweenAndHaunt.com. Thanks again to Brian Foreman, the Haunt Topic, for the heads up. Yep. Then, September 9th through the 11th, we have Mask Fest, Marriott, Indianapolis East, MaskFest.com. All kinds of makeup and special effecty stuff will be there, too. Yeah. Be sure, as Crystal is apt to warn you every time, this is right before season begins, don't get sick. Yeah, don't spread the germs to be on the mask. does not go well with opening night, man, just telling you. Nope. Don't screw that one up. And finally, November 11th through 12th is the Legendary Haunt Tour in Pittsburgh. They will be visiting Scarehouse on the Hundred Acres Manor. You get to ask those Hundred Acres Manor guy about the haunt they built in Dubai, yes. which we spoke about a few weeks ago on the news. And if you want to learn more, it is at Legendary Haunt Tour Two Ts There dot com. Please do not screw up the domain. I cannot promise where you will land. Otherwise, this is the internet, folks. That's very true. <laughs> For all I know, it, it could be some horrible, horrible <laughs> website. You can land on, like, ISIS's homepage on the internet that way. God. Really? <laughs> I don't know what their homepage is. I've never been there. No, neither. <laughs> Try to avoid it. If it's Legendary Haunt Tours 1T, then we're in trouble. And they're also probably committing trademark infringement, but that's a separate problem. <laughs> this is ISIS. I trademark. don't think that that would be a problem for them. <laughs> I, Trademark infringement is okay. not exactly bad for them. Okay. For them. So, so misspelling it takes you to nowhere. Okay. It doesn't Ooh, exist. Spooky nowhere. Yes. It doesn't okay. exist. Okay. Fair enough. All Maybe right. Maybe they should buy that just in case. Maybe just in case. Uh, that might not be a bad idea. Okay. So we wanted to do a post about guerrilla marketing. The no. main reason being so that I could get some use out of my four-year degree. <laughs> I, I actually, this is all true here. My degree is in advertising way back when. I, I, I swear my degree is not in copyright and plagiarism issues, my day job, or my passion of haunting. Turns out these are not college courses. <laughs> no. <laughs> Weird how this works out. Yeah. But yes, so marketing and advertising, my degree is in advertising, background in marketing. I've been wanting to talk about guerrilla marketing for quite some time because it is the marketing haunters and indeed businesses seem most interested in. Right. But before we can do that, we kind of have to define guerrilla marketing, at least... At least a little bit. At least a little bit, all right. Yeah. Now, this this turns out to be true. The ter- This is a true fact, unlike the fake ones we make up every week on this show. <laughs> What's following is truth. The term was actually coined by Jay Levinson in his 1984 book, Guerrilla Advertising. So, I thought that was pretty interesting trivia. It is. And in that book, he described it as such. Guerrilla marketing is an advertising strategy that focuses on low-cost, unconventional marketing tactics that yield maximum results. Now, like, 80% of that is kind of bull, because it's like <laughs> wasted words there. Right. Extraordinary. We can focus on the key words here. Yeah. Low-cost and unconventional. Right. And it's, it's interesting, because every time I'm at a convention, any type of convention, like I said, it's every business, but haunted, yeah. haunted houses especially, where guerrilla marketing is discussed, all everyone hears is low cost. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's the part of that sentence they heard. The other 80 plus words, or what, I don't know, 80% of it gets it completely ignored. Um, the problem with that is simply going low cost does not usually yield effective results. And we have seen that firsthand. We have. In fact, we had a friend who was going to go a traditional advertising route that was low cost or a more guerrilla style marketing. I don't know. Where do direct mailers fall into? It's fairly traditional, but because that's one of the things. Like guerrilla marketing is not like a bright line rule. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I, I specifically, like, you'll see a slowdown on the show notes. I struck out group on Living Social. But since I wrote the show notes, I've been kind of thinking that they kind of can be at the same time. Yeah, well, I think that the the door-to-door advertisements that yeah, are left. That's fairly that's, guerrilla. That's more guerrilla-style marketing than, yeah. say, a TV spot. Exactly. There is shades of gray here. <laughs> which, is, which was the choice he was facing. We were telling him to go more towards the targeted market, mm-hmm. which would be the door-to-door yeah. things. And he chose the other and didn't see a lot of... Um, yeah. A lot of good come out of that. So. Yeah, it, yeah, he did. He, it, it didn't go so high. And we'll talk more. I'm sure we'll talk more about that case study, a few others we've been involved with as we go. Right. Um, but yeah, the problem is low cost by itself 
is rarely, if ever, effective. Yeah. If, if you want a whole podcast about how to get cheap newspaper ads, how to get cheap TV spots, dude, I can help you with that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that actually really plays to my degree. Yeah. I can really teach you that. But the problem is I don't think it's particularly useful because the things that make those low cost also make them very ineffective. Right. I mean, you can do things like work and trade for a news with a newspaper and get cheaper ads. Or, like, one thing I've seen newspapers doing is they will, I mean, Haunt's doing, rather, is they will run classified ads for actors and also use that to help spread word of mouth of the Haunt. The problem is that doesn't always work very well. It's probably pretty good at getting you know, potential actors, but not very good at promoting the Haunt itself. Right, because people who are reading the classified gigs ad yeah. on Craigslist are not not your potential customers most of the time. They're not yeah. your the target your you're trying to reach. overlap is yeah. not jiving there. So, yeah, think about those types of things as you do this. So, a few things that are not guerrilla marketing real fast. Okay. Because it's, sometimes it's easier in my book to define what something is by what it isn't. It is. Um, I would say anything traditional advertising. Mm-hmm. That includes newspaper, TV, radio, billboards, etc., now, that being said, in 2016, one of the things that you just got me thinking about, I don't know if I consider direct mailers traditional advertising anymore. That's mm-hmm. something that really fell out of the wayside. In fact, I read, this is this is another true fact, not a fact I made up, <laughs> um, the Victoria's Secret Catalog is ceasing publication. Right. Direct mail is a dying art, if you will, as far as a mainstream advertising, but that does potentially open the door to more guerrilla-style campaigns. Right. You're not going to get drowned out in that noise. Right, exactly. And I know that one thing that we really read every time it comes to the house is a local magazine of ads called The Clipper here. Yeah. Um, I'm sure every area has one. Yeah, or, two, or something or similar, yeah. Yeah, we used to have two in this area. Now we only have one. Yeah, we only have one we get regular. I think there's one that's monthly and one that's weekly. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Uh, I, I may be stretching. Or maybe monthly and quarterly. I don't know. But, but the point of the matter is, yeah, it, there's less noise there. And by the way, the reason right. Victoria's Secret was a big deal is because they are the last of the major catalog providers. Um, it was like Sears. And then who was it after Sears? I'm trying to remember. It was Sears. And then there was a, another one. And Victoria's Secret was third. And then Victoria's Secret slowly, through attrition, became number one in the catalog game. And now they've abandoned it. Right. So, yeah, I don't know who's number one now. Maybe Toys R Us because of Christmas. I have. Yeah, possibly. Uh, possible. They, well, they only do one a year, but that's well, the the catalog. Well, and actually, they do the, um, they put their sales into the newspaper yeah, that's delivered to houses. Now. Yeah. So. So, yeah, anyways. But I also, I, I, in the show notes when I wrote this, I said I also don't include Groupon and Living Social. But I don't know anymore. And the reason I don't know anymore is because they both have kind of, like, on the opposite side of the, the far side of the bell curve now. Right. They peaked a few years ago as far as, like, everyone was doing them. They were totally mainstream. Right. Now they're less mainstream again. And the A may mean you can secure better deals. And B means, once again, less noise, less clutter. Right. I do still hear um, ads for Groupon and Living Social, and they come up every once in a while. But I know we aren't as active with them even as they were a few years ago. Actually, I unsubscribe from both on my email account, my main email account. Gotcha. So that's one reason. Uh, And and this is a divisive divisive topic. The mere mention of Groupon and Living Social in the Hawk community is a sure way to get stuff thrown at you. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not taking a stand one way or another if it's right for your business, because some people, like Holly, seem to have had great success with it. Some people, like Haunts We Know, have had miserable failures with it. Right. <laughs> so, it, it's going to depend upon your haunt, your situation, your location, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. There's variables we can't predict, but still, divisive topic warning there, <laughs> we, but merely by mentioning the word. Yep. Also, flyers can be a part of guerrilla marketing, but I don't think it's guerrilla marketing by itself. Leaving your stack of flyers at Spirit and other helping yeah. sources is a good thing to do. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, because it is still low cost. Yeah, you it, definitely it, need to do it. It's reaching out to your target <laughs> audience, too, Halloween lovers. Yeah. But that being said, it's not really guerrilla marketing. It's a very mainstream thing to do. Yeah. And, hey, we do it. We <laughs> do. We also, um, you know, leave them at places that you wouldn't think to leave flyers. 
Right. Because we're a community haunt, so we're able to be in all the stores, shops, restaurants, bars. Yeah. Within like a mile radius of us. Yeah, everywhere that we think our potential customers are going to be, we either go ourselves and introduce ourselves to the owners and say, hey, can we leave this here? We're doing a free thing. We've been doing it 10 years now. And they usually have no problems with us leaving it. Exactly. Um, And by the way, speaking of flyers, always have flyers. Yes. I never... I'm going to pound this one into the microphone over the course of this. Okay. And this is not just during season. No. But have extras throughout the year because we give them out. Every time we talk to people um, and we tell them about the haunt, we make sure that we have flyers in the car to hand them, to give them at least the information from last year. You are not currently... In your house, <laughs> and you do not have flyers on you or within easy access, you should have flyers on you. Yeah. Right? That yeah. Some reason? yeah. And the trunk of your car should be as far away as they get. And what should be on a flyer? Uh, basically, you want A. Well, A, first off, make your flyer visually distinctive. I'm not going to go into too much on this. Right. Because, like I said, we may actually wind up talking way more about it later. I'm sure we will. About print media, especially in general. But have a flyer that's visually distinctive. Our industry has a tendency to make flyers that all look the same. You can't tell Peter from Paul. Yeah, they all look like they came from the same horror design website. Um, And some of them do. (laughs) A lot of them do. But do something distinctive. Make sure it has all the prudent information. It has to have your name, your website, social media accounts, when you're open, where you're at what the cost is, and basically get a feel for what the haunt will be like, either through your visuals or your words if necessary. Yep. So that does, that's the core information, I would say. Um, okay. But basically think about the uh, the five W's and the H, when, where, why, how, and the, yeah. all that stuff. When, where, why, I forgot all the, forgot, but you know, give all the information. I just completely forgot the five W's. I am so <laughs> ashamed of myself right now. Who, They're going to take the degree back. Oh, my God. Who, what? When, where, why, how. <laughs> Those six things. My God, I'm sitting here counting like a five-year-old in this room. <laughs> they're, they're, they're kicking down the door. I can hear them storming my office. Drew Niani's going to be coming after you. Oh, man. And she's hopped up on Coca-Cola. She can do it, too, man. She weighs 98 pounds. She'll come barrel rolling through that window behind you. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, so we wanted to basically spend a lot of time this episode talking about some of ideas we had for guerrilla marketing tactics. Either we've seen work elsewhere, right? we've heard others say work, yep. or have used ourselves. Yes. So that's the three categories. Because, you know, it's getting to time where building's coming together, and you're probably thinking, how am I going to get people to my home? Yes, exactly. Well, here's some ideas <laughs> that you might not have thought of. Yeah. This one's my, the first one's probably my favorite. I'm not going to lie yeah. to you. I love this one for reasons that are personal to me, I admit. Yeah. But costume character visits. It always kind of blows my mind. Here in New Orleans, we have a parade culture. Yes. We have more parades, and you probably have holidays. <laughs> yes. Parades back up traffic all the time. Yes. We have tons of parades. <laughs> a lot of haunts in this area will pay money to participate in parades. They'll buy floats. They'll buy the ability to have a crew in the parade. Right. There's Crew Boo, mm-hmm. um, which is the Halloween parade. Mm-hmm happens sometime in october yeah we don't we, do, we never can go because we're, busy. we're already we're always working <laughs> we have no idea when it really is yeah i could probably look that up real quick while you talk more about this should. idea <laughs> but one of the things that always kind of is weird to me is okay that's that's fine and that's great and if it's a i don't i don't know how much that costs honestly if it's affordable why not it's, it's a great yeah. idea but also why stop there show up at festivals and other big gatherings uh, this year it's gonna be October twenty second, so yeah, Saturday we're, before. We're not going. <laughs> yeah, forget well, it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, we, maybe we'll see. But anyways, probably not. But yeah, show up at festivals and gatherings. Is there a place in your town where there's always a good crowd? Right. Try going there sometime. Yeah, um, like um, we we will go down to the local bar that has a TARDIS outside, um, because yeah. it's it's an it's a Nerdy it, bar. It, yeah, it's a nerd bar. It's an eclectic, eclectic culture. They have um, zombie pub crawl there between yeah. the two bars. So any place that's on a zo- zombie pub crawl or, on a, or a zombie walk list, make sure that you know you consider participating in those as well as showing up not on those days that those events are going on. Yeah, but if the culture is right for it, show up 
like I said, any public gatherings, any festivals or fairs that are taking place, if it's a private one, definitely ask for permission. But this is, this kind of surprised me how easy it is to get permission for this. Right. Call in advance and say, hey, I'm so-and-so. We're from this haunt. We want to come. We want to bring a couple costume characters and hang around and have fun and pal around. I think I've only heard of one place actually refusing it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely do it. But be respectful about it. And by respectful, I mean don't do anything inappropriate for that venue or event. Right. Don't wear tons of gory makeup to a church venue. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. And we've seen but we've seen this happen. Right. No, we, us- we um, have lots of church events around us during October, pumpkin sales and festival things. And we'll go to them um, in Costume. toned down costumes. Um, Bernie sometimes makes an appearance. Usually, because his, his is just top hat cane, old guy costume. Yeah. Everyone likes Bernie. Bernie's fine. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but, none of the, um, none of the inside characters are really revealed. No. Though. None but, of our big... It, 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 this is a great time if you have a title character. Yeah. To bring him out. Yeah. Don't just have him at the front door. Don't just have him in the haunt. Bring him out. Bring him to these events. Um, however, I will say this. If you have, like, a big, awesome build costume... Right. This is the place to bring it. Because that's going to... People are going to see that over the crowd. They're going to want photos. They're going to want to get out there and get photos with it. Right. Um, And by the way, always stop to take pictures as you're doing this. Yes. Every time. Someone says, can I take a picture? Yes. Yes. Boom. Yes. Take two. You know? Yeah. What if you had a sign to hold up that said your haunt name? That's that's a good (laughs) idea. You see, this is real marketing here. Or, you know, if it was somehow, like, on the back of your jacket or on the front of your shirt or whatever, as long as you're right. in costume and it's something that people want to get a photo of and want to interact with and want to see, that's fine. Like I said, bigger is better. Right. But... There were a few places that we've been that people have asked us, that we've asked to take photos with mm-hmm. their stuff. And they said, sure, as long as you hold the sign that promotes our cause. You and know? That's fine. That's perfectly That's fine. That's pretty cool. Um, have a helper go around with the costume character. Yeah. They're the ones in charge of giving out flyers or whatever other swag you want. Yeah. This is a good opportunity if you have cups or some other kind of swag. Here it's my, beads. Here it's, you know, <laughs> I mean, just something else other than just a flyer. Right. That is Because when I was in, in marketing, there's an expression about swag. Yeah. If you want something to not be thrown away or not be forgotten, make it shiny or make it heavy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are the two things. If you do one of those two, it will not get lost. Yeah. And I've got to say, you look in my office right now, yeah. and all the random crap I've picked up over <laughs> the years, everything that's made it is shiny and or heavy to some degree. Yeah. And actually, one of our um, our line actors who mm-hmm. created his costume last year, mm-hmm. custom build for him because... He needed he, a custom build. He, he can do that. He has the skills to do that. He actually went with you. Yeah, to, to a couple a, of stores. Yeah, we, we called up a couple of stores on um, the day before Halloween, I think it was. Right. And or the day stopped, before opening. Yeah. The day before opening. I can't remember which it was. And we hit him up, and it was a. It, that's the thing. This was like an entire spur of the moment deal. Yeah. We just had. He had. It was actually his idea. Well, he, yeah, because he had gone in to buy something, and he was telling them about it, his costume that he was making, and they're like, "Well, come we back." We want to see it. Yeah, we want to see it. And so we called him, said, well, why stop there? Let's also see if we can hit up here. And we were on the, the phone and calling these places up, just asking permission to swing by and entertain the kids. Yeah. Hand and out was flyers. We actually, and saw, we actually saw people come from there. So yeah. it does work, even the day of. But, yeah, the main thing is get out there, get in public, get in crowds, and go to where a crowd already exists. What about um, wearing your costumes on public transit? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine Chris on a bus in this? There'd be, there'd be memes about that. <laughs> the seven foot tall, eight foot tall ghoul. <laughs> yes. And that would be interesting. But yeah, yeah, basically be where there are crowds. Public transit, if you, like New Orleans public transit sucks. So it yeah. wouldn't work so good. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about the ferry, actually. Huh. Because you could ride the ferry over, walk around the French Quarter. Does anybody actually back. take the ferry anymore? I don't. I don't want to know the answer to that. We don't have time uh-huh. for that conversation. Okay. But anyways, point is, be where there are people. Be in costume. Give out flyers and get your name out there that way. Okay. It's a simple, beautiful. Other than your time, it is free. I don't know. Yes, time equals money. Blah blah blah. But the right. point of the matter is, we're looking for cheap money ways, not necessarily cheap time ways. Because that's one of the things about guerrilla marketing, by the way, mm-hmm. is it doesn't scale. 
Right. You're not going to advertise Coca-Cola this way, necessarily. No. Because it doesn't scale properly, but it does work well for one, you know, a limited targeted audience, which is what we're after here. Right. Also, by the way, if you're doing that, don't limit it to just season. If your state fair is in the summer and they will let you show up in costume, go. House of Shock has a Mardi Gras float here, for yeah. example. <clears throat> Same type of deal. Always be out there in public. And if you have flyers, if you have things that people take with them, they will remember you. Right. I also see, like, several vehicles with the House of Shock logo yep. driving around year-round. Yep. It's in their back glass window. It's really big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Easy to spot. Oh, yeah. We didn't, I didn't even put um, car wraps and car signs in this. No, but, but that, that is another type that's of That's another list. That's, that's definitely something else out there. Yeah. Another tip. Add that to the list. Um, <laughs> anyways. Another one I find very important that gets overlooked a lot in the hot industry is business partnerships. Right. Um, cooperate with local businesses to offer you know, swapping discounts of some sort where you, you know, like you have the cost, but you can potentially double the foot traffic a little bit here. Right. Um, this also lets you cross promote each other both on the website and on physical site too, yeah. which is very, very handy. Um, good candidates, and just for things I consider good candidates for this type of cross promotion, other haunts. I, yeah. I staunchly do not believe on the whole other haunts are your competition. No. I believe, because most people go to multiple haunts. Yeah. Most people exit haunt one, and what's the first thing they ask their buddies? Where to now? Where's the next yeah. haunt? Where are we going? Let's go again. Give them a direction. Yeah. Send them somewhere. Not only that, a better customer experience for you, for you knowing for your haunt, but they'll be doing the same to you, and you'll be getting you know, be getting a lot of benefit from it. Failing that, Halloween slash party stores are a safe bet. Right. They're always looking for these types of partnerships, especially since your attraction is going to be open likely as long as they are if they're a seasonal store. Yeah. The, the overlap there is just about perfect. Mm -hmm. um, also, anything geographically close. One of the more brilliant ones I have seen was a restaurant near a haunt. They, they, they hooked up in such a way that you could get a free ticket with so many entrees or whatever. I can't remember what exactly it was, but like you spend... Right. You but it was like these, a customer loyalty card, yeah, but yeah, to get a you, ticket to somewhere you else. You buy these things from, you know, buy a good dinner for two or spend $50 at the um, the restaurant, you get a free ticket. Or if you buy two tickets, you get a free appetizer or something at the haunt. Yeah, I think I've also seen that done with a local pizzeria on a haunt. Yeah, I think that might be what I'm actually thinking of. Yeah. Oh. Um, but yeah, the idea there is, once again, that give them somewhere to go and give them somewhere to come from mentality. Right. And family restaurants are a great location to try to work with, especially if they're locally owned. Chains. Chains, not so much, yeah. Yeah, chains are a little bit difficult even to leave flyers at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for both restaurants and for Halloween stores or places that, that sell Halloween stuff. Yeah, you know, we're very fortunate where we are in New Orleans and that there is such a family owned restaurant history here. Right. Restaurant locally owned restaurant, um, family and locally owned restaurants here that we don't run into that too much. Right. There's just not that many chain restaurants. Yeah, but I do remember a big party supply store that will not let us leave flyers. <laughs> and we won't even mention their name. Yeah. We'll just say they were in the city. Yeah. And, yeah. And they were a party store. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, long and short of it is do what you can in that regard with working with nearby and local businesses. It can really do well. Also, malls are pretty good if you're a big enough haunt to get a partnership going with a mall. The reason is malls have the foot traffic. Right. And that gets you, once again, on site in a place with a lot of eyeballs. And if you have the kind of football, foot, football, foot traffic <laughs> to reciprocate that, um, it can be a great symbiotic relationship, especially since a lot of haunts do open up somewhat close to a larger mall. Right, and not only that, but take your characters to the mall. Once again, and that can be part of that symbiotic relationship, part of that deal. Yep. Come here, and the mall can even help you promote that. Come here Thursday, whatever, to meet so-and-so from the haunt. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe maybe they'll even set up Santa's Village. I was just thinking that. They should totally have a haunted house village. Oh, my God. I'm totally down for this idea. Let's get in touch with our local one and see if they'll let us. <laughs> they will not let us. But Why? They, I don't know. But they might let a bunch of larger haunt than us do it. I think that'd be really cool. Um, but, yeah, some examples of deals you can do. One free ticket if you spend X dollars at the first place. 
Um, five dollars off a ticket if you book for the come with a ticket from here. Right. Uh, free VIP t- upgrades with receipt. Um, also, sometimes you can add free T-shirts or free cheap merch, whatever floats your boat. Um, also, you no. Know, in the flip side, a free drink or appetizer with a hot ticket at a restaurant. That's the one, like I said, I saw previously. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my thought there is basically find businesses that are a natural connection and use it. <laughs> Just use it and believe me. And like I said, don't be shy about approaching other haunts. I, I th- at the end of the day, most haunters seem to see it my way. Right. Because we are a small community and we should all get along. We should we all get along. And, and a rising tide really does lift all boats. If, right. Haunt, if there are more people going to haunts, all haunts will benefit. Yeah. Okay. Now, this one is another one of my personal favorites. Contests. Yay! I like contests. Because contests are cheap and pretty much promote themselves. If you're doing it right, you're paying almost exclusively for the prize. Right. And yes, that prize might be expensive, but it's still a hell of a lot cheaper than all paying for all the promotion that, that prize may get you. Right. Well, and it also could be, you know, it doesn't have to be an expensive prize. It could be a prize that you make for the haunt, you yeah. know, have this prop at the end of the season. Yeah. You know, win this thing. Ah, I didn't think of that one in this list. That's a good idea. Yeah, the main cost of a contest, if you're doing it right, is the prize. Because the idea is, you buying that prize, you putting it out there, is going to make it so that the contest is promoted by others. Whether it's the media promoting it, or the people entering the contest that are going to promote it. Right. One or the other. Um, Example contest, the most basic is enter your information to win a prize. Yeah. A prize could be free tickets, it could be a prop at the end of haunt season, it could be your photo taken with character, whatever. Free t shirt. Free t you know, it could be literally yeah. anything. Just bear in mind the bigger the better, the better, the more kick ass the prize, the more entrance you'll get. Yep. You got this is a spend more to get more, but it's still not silly expensive considering that this is an incredibly powerful way to build up your email slash mailing list. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know how many people call into radio stations still Mm -hmm. because i know at least one person who won tickets for the concert that's going on right now by doing that by by giving the radio station her number and her name if you don't believe these contests are worth a damn here's what you do go to your local mall Mm -hmm. i guarantee to you if it's a big enough mall somewhere they're doing one of those damned Put your name in a hat, win a vacation, win a car thing. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Little kiosks? Yeah. Just just grab a drink and watch. How many people do it? Yeah. You probably will see dozens of people even on a slower day do it. Why? Because people think, <laughs> Somebody's got to win it. Somebody's got to win, exactly. And it's not. It's free to me to enter. Yeah. So, yeah. It, basically, this is a great way to build up your contact list and to get your name out there and get other people's contact information. And if you make sure that the contest rules specify that information has to be valid to win, it can also help make sure that they don't just put bogus information in, which is a real problem sometimes when you try to get the information from them at front of house or after the or after they've gone through. Right. So what we're going to do then is we're going to hold a contest to give away free tickets to our hall, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think that works so good in our case, do you? <laughs> Why we not? We might need a new prize, one that isn't already free. <laughs> I, I, I know it can feel <laughs> like some of the customers are real morons, <laughs> but they're not. <laughs> okay. No, I'm, I'm joking, yeah. of course. But uh, Real quick on the email list, another way to build your email list during season is to have a guest book. Yes, absolutely. And that's another thing that I'm always surprised about is how many people stop on the way out of a haunt to put their name and email address yep. in a guest book. You would think that would be a dead habit reserved only for funerals and really well, obnoxious parties. we're kind of funeral adjacent. <laughs> okay, okay, fair, fair. Fair <laughs> is fair. Fair is fair. <laughs> But anyways, yeah. So yeah, then tear your name to win's most basic. Now, one that was actually discussed at Haunt Con, I thought was interesting, was a haunt ran a contest that said stay one night in our haunt. He had a haunted hotel theme going, right? And when I think it was a, a vaca- like a vacation, right? And the vacation he ended up paying out two, mm-hmm. so they cost him about ten thousand dollars. Expensive, but he got 
so much media attention. He estimated he got over $100,000 worth of media attention for that 10K. Yeah, which is a great investment, great turnaround. That's a 10X return. Yeah. So maybe not a vacation if that's outside your budget. Yeah. But something of value, $1,000 maybe, like that, yeah. you can get some insane return on your investment for that. Yes, you'll probably have to pay it out because once someone gets to that phase, they can probably make it through, even with your best scare actors trying to run them out. But right. the point remains that you can gain so much from that, so much attention, so much press, and it will really put you put your head over shoulders. And this can be really great if you're in a market that is super competitive in advertising. Yeah. This gives you that, that little leg up. Yeah, and also, um, in that case, the scare actors mm -hmm. would get a bonus. Yes, $500 a, bonus. A $500 bonus if they were able to scare the patron out of the hotel before the night was through. Yeah, and the, I think, I'm trying to remember how exactly it went down. But the idea of the contest was they were going to pick five people yeah. at the end. So, basically, like, a crap ton of people entered. Yeah. An absolutely insane number of yeah. people entered. More than he could ever imagine. More than he could ever fathom. Right. He drew five names out. Two were bumped off immediately yeah. because they didn't actually qualify. They were underage. Yeah. Basically, they were under, I think it was 18 to enter. They were under 18. Right. Couldn't do it. Under 18, under 13, you could be over 13 to enter, but you had to be over 18 to participate in the actual event. So they, they were bumped off immediately. One person got um, scared off, or at least so scared she broke the rules egregiously enough that it counted. Right. And I th and honestly, thinking back on it, I think he just paid $1,000. Yeah. Um, I think I, I think I remember that wrong. Yeah. I should I really should have looked that one up. I didn't, I didn't no, plan on talking okay. about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> a lot of this podcast is highly unplanned. Yeah. But the point of the matter is, so he paid out to two people and got tens of thousands of sign-ups and tons of media attention, and he, it was just a, it was a boon for him. Right. Yep. <clears throat> Another idea, design a scare contest or design a room contest. Who hasn't wanted to design a room in their favorite haunted house? Yeah. So... Get input from the public. Give pe public a little bit of ownership on it and let them feel a little bit of ownership. Yeah, not only that, but you could also give them, like, a picture with their name or something. Yeah. Some kind of credit like you would see in a movie, like a walk-on in a movie. Yeah, exactly. Be in her haunt. Here's your photo, your, your painting of you hanging in this gallery or whatever. Right. Something like that also can work. Um, social media contests, I think, are really, really great, too. Mm -hmm. Um because social media is inherently social. It's in the name. Right. Um, so you can do things like submit your best photos, submit your best slogans, submit your best, yeah. you know, get people to participate. And especially you encourage people to, like, try to rally the most retweets or likes or shares or something. Yeah. That way they're encouraging others to help spread your message. Yeah. It sometimes It sounds stupid, but it does really work. Help us reach this number of... You know, people liking our page and the first yeah. hundred or whatever get a small prize. Exactly. Make it something where people are really pushing to get um, to that top bar. And do you think that putting a specific number in there is important, like a goal? Uh, it, goals typically work very well. This is something I've noticed with petition sites. Is I like, I go to a lot of uh, I don't actually sign a lot of petitions, but I see a lot of petitions in my line of work. Right. And one thing I'll notice is that even if the petition theoretically has an unlimited number of signatures, they won't. Right. They just want all the signatures they can get. What they'll say is, "Help us get to 500 signatures." Right. When people sign, they get to 501. Then the number just changes. Help us get to a thousand. Right. Help us get to two thousand. Exactly. Um, and then it keeps yeah. So it, not specific numbers as a goal does help. Um. But the main thing with these campaigns is to remember to be creative. Don't just simply do what others have done. Come up with your own ideas. We're just giving examples. Yeah. I know this is frustrating. We're not saying copy what we're saying, but maybe consider trying to find ways that you can take these ideas and spin them into your own. Right. Now, okay, go ahead. Uh, one quick idea for a place to put a marketing thing is your local school newspapers. Yes. And that's something that you have to do at the beginning of the year is to reserve your spot. Because um, they usually don't aren't weekly. No, they're not. They're usually either they usually either biweekly or monthly. But also, like I said, you have to reserve your spot pretty soon. And considering most schools are probably getting ready to get back into session right as we're talking. Yeah. Now's the time to start calling. Exactly. Like today. Exactly. That's why I'm mentioning it. Today. I think yep. we're going to be going live with this August first. Yeah. So yeah. Now. Now. Start calling. Yep. Um. Di other digital campaign ideas. 
you know, I, this one's going to be kind of a debate topic, I suspect. But I'm kind of curious to see what happens over the next few months with Pokemon Go. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen a lot of people be harsh against the game. But I think that, once again, it is a social aspect. Yes. It has people meeting new people yes. and going out and, and to mm. new places. Yes. Like, there's a... To give an example, we both are players of Yes. It. So, you know, already getting the shoes thrown at us. It's okay. Just hear us out a minute. Hear us out. No. All right? <laughs> we actually have something productive to say here, people. Yeah. There is a business park not far from our house. Right. That is very beautiful, actually. It's a very beautiful business yeah, park. Yeah. It, it's it, a, it has never been able to keep stuff in no, there, though. It is, it's positioned around a nice, gorgeous fountain. It's two stories. It looks like a little... You would swear it it's looks, a retirement village if you didn't know what it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or at least high-end boutiques. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's it, what I expect to see there. you're absolutely right. It's never been able to keep much in there consistently because it's never gotten any foot traffic. Right. Somehow... They have about 10 Poke Stops around the quarter mile loop. Yeah. It is bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of Poke Stops they have in this very, very tiny area. And the businesses are dropping lures. They're doing everything they can. And we were out there after the businesses were closed a few nights ago and they were well, still welcoming people. Right. And there was, what, hundreds of people. Yeah. Hundreds of people just wandering around to these different businesses all day long. And learning about what these businesses are, what they do, about the restaurants in there. Yeah. I don't, I don't in fact, I've ever seen that many people in that park, period. No. And it's not because there is one restaurant in there we do like and do, used to go to at least very there's, regularly. Yeah. There's, there's two. No. Mojo's. Oh, yes. Yeah. You mean voodoo? No. Okay. I mean both. Okay, fine. <laughs> Anyways, the point of the matter remains that we've never seen that many people there total. And no. now it's, it's crazy gangbusters and people are eating at the restaurants in there for poke stuff. Right. This can be a potentially big deal. Yeah, a lot of the times if we're going to eat out, we're going we're going to look up if a pokey stop is at the restaurant so we can sit there and drop a lure, we'll catch stuff. Grab a couple beers, hang yeah. out, you know, chill. So, yeah. yeah. We also, now, um, from a business standpoint, that's, you know... It, it can be a real boon. Yeah. So here's my thing. Right now, requesting a Pokestop yeah. is free. Yeah. There's literally no reason you shouldn't just go on the website and request one right now for your haunt. Yeah. All you need is a good photo of something that's permanent and year-round outside the haunt, an explanation of why it's a cultural touchstone or cultural place. Right. And that's it. And... You know what? Because the thing about it is, not only does it draw people there to visit the Pokestop, the Pokestop has information about you. It has your name, has a photo, and from that, people can learn what you're about. Right. And that's a potentially a boon. Now, here's the thing. They are going to be introducing paid stops and other things soon. Um, as far as that goes, I would personally wait and see how this game is doing come season. Right. Because we've got at least a month yeah. before season begins. Already, the number of players is dropping off. Yeah. I still think it'll be very popular in September. Yeah. Well, if nothing else, it'll be a great thing for people to do in line while they're waiting to get in. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, that actually is a really good point. You know, you have a Pokestop there. You drop lures. How much is it to, like, lure a haunt for about four? If I remember correctly, it's like five bucks. It ends up being fairly cheap. Yeah, I think it, it, I'm, I'm looking out now. If you buy, like, Poke coins in bulk... And that lures in bulk, it's it's very, very cheap for half an hour. It ends up being something like a few bucks a day. Yeah. Which is not, it's not even a ticket. <laughs> and if, basically speaking, if you've got that lure going, at the very least, people in line can catch Pokemon while they're in line and play the game and enjoy it. And it gives people a reason to come. But yeah, I would really, as far as like the paid Pokestops and the paid advertising promotion that's coming, I'd hang back a little bit and see what happens. Give it another few weeks. See which way the trend's going. What's up? It's about $10 for 16 lures. <clears throat> okay. Which are 30 minutes each. Okay. So if you did it five hours, it'd be 10 bucks. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So that's not too bad. Nope. Um, so yeah, hang on to that one. Um, another one, and I read this um, on another site. This one was interesting. I think it applied to the haunt industry. Um, dating apps. Yeah, I read that <clears throat> in the notes and I'm like, are you sure you meant to put that in here? No, I, I did. Basically, the idea is you partner either partner with a dating app or create one yourself to pair people with others to go to the haunt with. Either as a date or just as a friend, even. Right. Because <clears throat> there's a lot of people out there who like going to haunts, but per like going socially and maybe can find someone to go with. Yeah. So maybe the prospect of making a new friend or making a, finding someone a new date. 
Yeah. Might help motivate them. This could be fun because I know that every time I meet someone who who looks like they might be haunty, I'm all like, you're my oh, friend, you're oh, my people, oh, come here. I want to touch you and squeeze you and love you with the itty bitty pieces. Exactly. And call you um, George. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, <laughs> basically speaking, though, you can do this with off-the-shelf software. It can be done pretty easily. Um, and, yeah, it's just an idea that was out there, and, like, restaurants have been doing it uh-huh. with some success. So I thought it was an interesting idea. I just want to throw that one out. I'm not I'm not sure exactly all the details on it. I'll leave that to someone else. But I thought I, it was a cool idea when I saw it. You could have people rate themselves Scaredy Cat or Hardcore Haunter. Yeah, they, they had a little questionnaire as you pair people up with. <laughs> they, they can, like, questionnaires relevant to your haunt, specifically, well, yeah. or, or haunting in general. It could be fun. It could. Okay, and... Of course, I have to mention viral videos. I don't think you're allowed to have a conversation about guerrilla marketing no. without saying the word viral video at least five times. No. So viral video, viral video, viral video, viral video. All right, you no, got it. Yeah, you, no, no, no. You're good. You met the requirement. requirement. Yeah. But I mean, like, with haunts, we've, we've seen the scare of the night campaigns. Those can right. be very effective, especially if you're the only one doing it in your area. Um, parody videos, story slash mystery videos, well-produced story videos can go well. Uh, and also, these can work well with contests, sharing people, getting people to view it, making this a requirement of entering the contest. The basic idea, the basic problem with viral videos is that it's so unpredictable as to what will and will not take off and be marketing. Right. You know, and, and it can be kind of brutal to spend all this time and all this energy creating a video and then have like 40 people watch it. Yeah. And I know I've been there, you know? Yeah, I know, I know. Sorry, I was just thinking of a new idea. Uh-oh, or maybe an old idea. I don't know. Um, well, I was thinking that, cause you know that there are, are things like geocache. Yeah. Where you, where you put in coordinates and you go there and then you can find out the history and stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, what if you did that, but you left either the little scan codes or something, which would pull up a video that would tell you the story behind your haunt. So you go to the first one, you get the first piece of the puzzle, and it gives you the location for the next piece. And all the while, you you get your customers to start at one place and yeah. get closer and closer to your haunt. Yeah, check out uh, geocaching.com. If you're not familiar, that's G-E-O-C-A-C-H-I-N-G.com. Yeah. If you're not familiar with geocaching. Um, that could be a very interesting idea. Yeah, I didn't, see, that's another um, gorilla marketing tactic, but I didn't mention it was geocaches. Yeah. Um, it's like Pokemon Go, but real. Yeah. <laughs> Well, before Pokemon Go, we described it as a a treasure chest played globally, a yeah, treasure, treasure hunt, hunt, hunt played globally. You know, basically, it's like the old joke: we spend multi billion dollar GPS satellites to hunt down ammo boxes in the woods. Yeah, <laughs> which is accurate. Yes, but the point remains: it can be a great way. Like we've left geocaches at haunt before to yeah. get people to go there. And that worked out reasonably well. But, yeah, I like your idea of a, a geocache-based scavenger hunt type thing. That's kind of yeah. cool. Um, one thing to never forget is to have you, your actors, and everyone else, and this is moving on to a different topic, right. always be talking about your haunt. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay, don't annoy your friends. You've already told them. Yes, they but, know you. <laughs> but the new people you meet, make sure early in the conversation they know about your heart. Oh, yeah. In, in fact, in all of the interviews I did just last month, including the job I got, I said, okay, so in October... Kiss off. <laughs> um, I'm going to need a few days off because I have a haunted house. Yes. And actually, I think that that's one of the things that got me this job was that I told them that we used guerrilla marketing techniques to get the people here. And they are looking for inventive and creative ways to advertise their department, their department, yeah. because I'm, I'm now working for a college. So the department's struggling. So I'll be implementing some of these ideas there. Yeah, sounds good. And like I said in the beginning, always, always, always have flyers. Oh, yeah. Always have flyers. Always as have last year's flyers at the very damn least. This year's flyers after you get them. Right. If you got them already. And like I said, if you're not actively listening to this in your house and you do not have flyers within a couple of minutes of you. Yeah. You done goofed. <laughs> do better. Because... <laughs> I'm, I'm Maybe a, instead of business cards, we should um, get some off-season flyers. Exactly. You know, that's a, not a bad idea. Off-season flyers that are the size of business cards is not a bad idea. The basic idea here is you always want to have something physical so that when you have that conversation and they're interested in you, yeah. you say, here, look up more on your own time. Yeah. You've given them something that they will hold on to. And at least, if even if they throw it away 
a week or two down the line, that's you touch them multiple times because you talk to them. They will probably look up the website. They'll probably see that card at least a couple more times. Right. You touch them. You've interacted with them a few more times. And it's in marketing, it's those points of contact that are crucial. Yeah. Because you have to have so many points of contact before you can have the potential for a sale. Right. And how much it is depends upon the industry, the the the, the service, the product, or whatever. But there is a there is a definite amount you need to have. Um. Now we're wrapping up here. We're running out of time. <laughs> but a few general tips for guerrilla marketing. One. Focus locally. Yeah. Look within your haunt, and if at all possible, focus within on the area about a five-mile radius. Right. And if you are rural or a suburb of a big city, don't forget your suburbanites. Yeah. Don't just advertise in the big city that's yeah. next door. And that was really frustrating in one haunt we worked at where they were, um, in a, they were in a city that's outside of New Orleans, a r- more rural upriver city. And the issue was they kept focusing all their marketing on New Orleans, trying to get New Orleanians to come out to upriver. Yeah, they won't even cross the river. They, they won't even cross the river to visit in the us, city. all right? Yeah. We're technically New Orleans Parish. They won't come visit us. They're yeah. not going to, you know, upriver a ways. Right. Folk, and we, meanwhile, we're talking to people in their town who have never heard of them. Yeah. And that's, like, we have a haunted house in this town? Yeah. They're like, ugh. You know, it's really frustrating. Yeah. But, and this this usually happened when we would finish at the end of the night and go to one of the Waffle numerous twenty four hour places Waffle. to eat. Yep. Waffle House, Denny's, Huddle whatever House, was open, yeah. Huddle House, and they would say, "Where are you guys coming from?" Yeah, wait, you're all made up and my it's not for, Halloween. It's not Halloween. It's not for two weeks. What's going on here? <laughs> I don't know if I trust you guys. Exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, we work with a little haunted house up there. There's a haunted house in the state. Yeah, the exact conversation played out at least half a dozen times. More than that. Uh, and I over say, and every year. Every year, too. It's So, focus locally to begin with. Try to reach your neighbors first. You'd be surprised just how, I don't want to say clueless, but how unaware your local community can be about you. Right. If you don't reach out to them. Focus locally and... Do take a do keep in mind who is you know your audience who is coming through how old are they male female look at the demographics mm-hmm. look at everything and try to make sure that your guerrilla marketing as along with all your marketing is reaching that audience or is reaching to a more desirable audience if there is one yeah if you know you're only reaching twelve year olds maybe you should try to move up maybe you should see about contacting the, the school to see if you can go to the high school football exactly. game and hand out koozies at halftime. Exactly. See if you can get to an older range. But the main thing is you want to hit your target market. And your target market is probably either going to be what you have now or what is adjacent to it. Right. So just focus on those two things. Focus on your target market and focus on where you are first. Because like I said, with guerrilla marketing, this stuff don't scale, dude. <laughs> You're not going to be doing this nationwide. Right. So you need to pick, you know... Your, your sweet spot, and that almost certainly is going to be your home, your house. So stay local and stay with who is coming to your haunt. Yep. Anything else you want to add? I think we've covered this pretty thoroughly. Yeah. We tossed out some pretty interesting ideas. I've, I've thought of a few through the course of this conversation. <laughs> Me too. I, I, that geocaching one actually was pretty sweet. I kind of like that. Yeah. It could be a great way to instill a little mystery, especially if you got like a good, like we have City Park here. Yeah. Which is can be in parts of it pretty spooky and dark and yeah. isolated and woody and that'd be fun yeah i could see you doing that yeah well on that note everyone thank you very much for joining us for this past near hour we greatly appreciate your time and attention once again we are haunt weekly you can find more out about us at hauntweekly.com find us on facebook at haunt weekly find us on twitter at haunt weekly wow it's like we had a theme going or something <laughs> Yes, we are Haunt Weekly All Things. New site is in the progress. We will let you know the minute that goes. We'll probably do a week it goes live. Yeah, I'm going to miss my August 1st deadline, aren't yeah, I? Yeah, you know, you got three hours. Hurry it up. <laughs> <laughs> Get working. All right. <laughs> there is a site in progress. I swear I've seen it. Yes. I have seen it. Yes. Um, so, yes, I do know it exists. We will have that online as soon as possible. But in the meantime, thank you very much for joining us. Once again, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. This was Haunt Weekly, episode number 35 for Guerrilla Marketing. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that on uh, there. <laughs> just, just come back next week. We're doing the news. <laughs> See you then. <laughs>